Tech Rabbit here. So I thought we'd take a look at this. The um, Unity uh, UT61B um, digital multimeter. And um, we'll just do a functional demonstration of it. So let's get into it. So uh, just going to use the um, signal generator I have for simulating AC voltage and then I'll be using my um, DC power supply to provide DC voltage. So let's have a little look at this. So we want to um, start with DC voltage <coughs> and then you have these probes and you put the one, the black one into the common and then the red one into the one where it says V for voltage and now I'm just going to connect up the power supply so we get something to display and then we put it on and then we have um, 10 volts um, DC and you have several functions here we can go through the general ones and they are covering pretty much every measurement mode you have so here, if you want to have the backlight, you can press on this button for a while, and there you go. And also this um, doubles as a hold function, so when you get the H up there, then it holds the uh, measurement. So you know, even if I vary the um, voltage on the, on the input side, then it doesn't change until I actually free it up. And then you see you get a different, different figure. Uh, you also have the option to um, set what range you want to have. So this is on uh, voltage, and then you can um, switch it to um, different accuracy levels. So this is like the pure volts, and then you can't take that because it gets too low. And then this is um, volts with two digits. back to bolts and um, it also has a, a minimum and maximum so if we reduce the voltage oh, sorry reduce it down to something like five a little bit under and then we go and whoa now we go up again take it to like 15 and then when you click on the max, it says it shows you what was the maximum voltage that was measured. And then when you take um, minimum, that should show the minimum. Oh, that's strange. Oh, did I remember how that works wrong now? down in minimum mode. So, and then we try and increase the voltage again, and as you see it stays. So it tells you the minimum voltage that was measured. And then if we put it to max, then if I put the uh, voltage higher than 15, then it will register the highest voltage and then when I reduce the voltage it'll keep the highest voltage and then one can free it up by pressing on it more than two seconds and then you free up the um, lock and then it goes back to standard standard mode and then you have this uh, relative function so let's say that we have now 10 volts approximately and then I put on the relative operation. So then it tells me how much is the voltage deviating um, from what was previously measured. So 
now we see that we get 5 volts more input more than in the other direction it can also be negative so now we're going down to minus 6 volts compared to what one has as a reference and then you have the um, maximum minimum function you press it once and it goes into max mode so then you can if you have an increasing voltage you can increase it to like 15 and then when you reduce again the input voltage it keeps the maximum value and then if we put it into minimum mode and we reduce the voltage and then we increase it again it will keep the minimum value that it measured well, that's kind of useful So I'm going to um, measure some AC voltage. So we need to switch to AC mode. Connect these to the signal generator. And I've set up um, 5 volts. Um, peaked peak voltage and uh, peak to peak voltage. And 50% duty cycle and um, 50 hertz. So there we get 3.3 volts is pretty much what would be expected. And the nice thing is that you can actually switch here and you can um, you can get the um, voltage ah, frequency. So that's pretty much 50. And then you can get the duty cycle, which is the um, sinus wave, how much of it is on the plus side and how much is on the minus side. So pretty much 50-50. And to be able to get back to voltage measurement, then you have to press this function button again, and then you get back to the normal voltage voltage measurement. And then you have the um, uh, milli uh, volt, uh, but it's basically it's the range for millivolt measurement, so it's exactly the same as voltage. And then you have the same access to the um, hertz functionality and all the other functionality. But let's um, take a look at the ohm first. So, resistance. So the first thing is, you just want to see if, a, if there is a connection between two different par points. So, when you just put the... There, and then it'll show you the absolute resistance. So, resistance measurement. Let's see if we, we take, a, for example, this type of resistor, and then we can um, put it between the leads, and then it will tell us what it is. Or, actually, since you noticed it's a bit sort of shaky with these, and then you have to actually use your fingers in the way, you can actually use an adapter. Like this. Plug that in. And then you can just use either this area here, which is actually for surface mount resistors, but also can be used for normal resistors. Or you can press it in there, and then it'll show you what it is. So here, this one, actually, when you plug it in, it's nice because then you don't have your hands in the way. So it will give you the uh, resistance value. And then it has some um, sub-nodes, sub-modes in the resistance functionality. So you can get to... Uh, Diode, forward voltage measurement. I find that easier to use this. But you can also use the adapter. So let's see. Find the diode.
So, let's see, we take the diode, and then we measure the forward, or actually to check if the diode is working. So in one direction, there should not be anything, and then in the other direction, it should show the voltage drop of the diode. And this dial seems to be working. And then the next functionality is continuity. And that's just a very simple functionality, either it's sort of open circuit or closed circuit. So basically if you want to see if this wire is okay then you can just put one, one on one sensor and then the other side and then it beeps when it's on if this conductivity is And then there's capacitance measurement Actually, that's also that's a bit easier to do also with this. If we take this extra adapter, and we can take, for example, a small electrolytic capacitor. it 9.28 I thought that was wrong <laughs> it, it, it actually the capacitance measure, measurement takes a while 455 microfarads let's see if that's even close Four hundred and seventy nominal. Yeah, these things aren't that super accurate. Eh? Let's give it another chance since I actually did that a little bit. Give it enough time to stabilize. They did warn that when you have big capacitors, then uh, yeah, four hundred. That's better. Four hundred and fifty so. And by the way, when you're measuring electrolytic capacitors, um, make sure that you measure the. You, if they're big capacitors, like 1,000 microfarads, or they've been in an active system, then you know, before you touch the poles or something, measure it with the voltage measurement to see that the capacitor is actually empty. And it's especially important nowadays when you, if you have um, so-called um, supercapacitors, they can really hurt you if you're not careful. But this small stuff, Low power, low voltage, that's not really a big concern. And then, of course, you can also measure the ceramic capacitors. Same thing, we can put them into this slot there. We let it stabilize a bit. 9.37 nanofarads, yeah, that sounds about right. So oh, that was capacitance. Now you do have a direct mode also, just for frequency measurement, and then um, if you press this function you can have the um, duty cycle directly. So you actually can just do it independently. Of, um, but then it's um, like a voltage measurement without the voltage. So it's, um, or a current measurement. So if you've got it setting up to measure current, then you can get the on, have only the um, the frequency function available. And then there's uh, temperature measurement. We need the extra probe. And 
though I think it was black one in there and a red one in there. Let's hope I got it right. Yeah, 22 Celsius. That is fine. You can also convert it to Fahrenheit. Mm. Ah, yeah, it's the blue function. Okay. And then you get it in Fahrenheit. So if you're more familiar with the working in Fahrenheit, then you just press that. So. So now I rigged up a small circuit to measure currents and. And the most important thing to remember is that to measure currents you need to actually move the move the um, input to either this one, which is um, for the milliamps or microamp measurement, or this one for full full amps. And the functions you have here are like a, a dedicated position for microamp measurement either um, AC or DC and, the same. and then you have milliamp and then you have amps so that, and then you have access to the same functionality for um, range, max, min, relative and, and direct access to frequency measurement and duty cycle measurement so I don't, th I don't think I'll make a test of both AC and DC measurements There's really not much point because it's 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 similar to what the voltage voltage measurements are like. Oh, anyway, now we're going to connect the meter to the computer, and I got the um, USB to um, serial adapter. So this is a product from Cable Creation. I'll be showing their website and how to pick up the drivers and stuff for that. It's a little bit more involved. And then now um, the meter comes with a serial cable with an optical connection. So what you do is you turn the meter around and you slip out this dummy bit. And you take um, this adapter part and then you plug it in. And then you take the serial adapter. Plug it into there like that, and then this goes into the USB. Okay, this is the Cable Creations uh, website. I've already gone to the download page, so you can see the URL up there, or you can search with um, this type name. So that'll get you to the download, and then you need to download this package here. So, anyway, I just set up a simple setup to um, create a sinus wave running at a very slow speed rising and falling so that the meter has something to measure so we can actually look at the software and see what we get. So anyway, um, once you've installed the driver um, then um, and you actually plug in the adapter then you actually get the um, serial port here. And, um, the the uh, very strange thing is that the the meter software supports COM1 to COM4. So when I installed this for the first time, the, this serial port got assigned to COM6. <laughs> I couldn't use, but you can change it if you right click, which you can't see the the menu. But uh, when you take properties, um, let's see if I can bring up the properties page. Just a sec. Yes, I can. There we go. And then, um, oh, where was it? Details. Oh, port settings. Sorry. Here you have the actual window for um, creating, uh, changing the port settings. And then you can actually have take advanced, which is yet another window. Okay, try and get to that. Yep, there we go. So, here's the window. 
And then here you can actually change what COM port the um, adapter will be using. So it'll, it'll give you the list of the, if XSplit would show the drop down, which it doesn't, then you would see all your COM ports and whether they're in use or not. And then you can assi and hopefully be able to assign it to a COM port that's less than COM5. <laughs> Otherwise, you won't be able to use them either. So that's the um, physical installation of everything required to get the serial connection to work. There's the driver installed, driver configured, and now we can actually go to the um, meters. Okay, so this is the software, and um, it has the option to change the COM port, but it's not very intuitive. You actually have to click on this field here. And then you can cycle through all the options and it ends at 4, like I discussed before. So you have to have the port, the um, COM port that the meter is connected to between COM1 and COM4. I had it connected to COM2. And before you make the connection, I suggest you press the button, which is the um, relative button at the top of the meter where you have the RS232C marking on it. So keep it pressed until it goes beep. And then you will um, get a signal. Or it will start in the sending stuff. So then when you click the connection, then it will actually activate here in the software. And um, you know, the software has some basic functions. You can, you can save the graph. You can create the sampling, change the sampling into view. So well, you can load data into here, you can print it, you can save it. But the And then you can set up a, an alert value between uh, you know minimum and maximum value, so if you would like to follow. Now the only drawback with this system is that it seems to be um, you get some uh, like the, I can't see that these spikes here which it draws are actually in the measurement values in, in here. But um, as you see it's not really doing a hundred percent good job of graphing the um, sinus wave. <laughs> so it's a, it's a bit of a mess actually. But I mean, I don't know. It's, it's probably not super important. But anyway, that's um, yeah, pretty much that for the software. It's not, not that um, complicated. So anyway, if you um, thought this video to be informative, um, consider subscribing. There will be more content like this. So tell other people, maybe somebody's interested in buying um, this type of meter. Then you could um, point them towards this video. And um, buy me a coffee. Spend nights making these videos. And um, yeah, well, see you in the next one.